Hi folks, this video is about anticyclones. So uh, it follows on from the depressions video that I did, uh, worth checking out if you haven't already. Anticyclones are like the opposite uh, number to depressions. As you should remember from the last video, depressions are low pressure, quite small, they're quite fast moving. Anticyclones are very different. Uh, they're actually um, in many ways a lot simpler to understand but they are important in terms of the type of extreme weather and hydrometeorological hazards that we get. So we need to think about what anticyclones are, how they form, and what kind of weather conditions we get. So first off, what are anticyclones? They're areas of high pressure air. So we've got an area of high pressure with air sinking down onto it. So from the depressions, that air is lifting up, low pressure, because it's lifting the pressure away. This is the opposite. It's like someone pressing down on your shoulders, putting high pressure onto you. That air is pushing down, and it warms up as it goes. As anything pressurizes, it heats up. Now that is important to know, because if it's heating up, it can absorb more water vapor. And that means that anticyclones, as they're warming up, absorbing more water vapour, means that you aren't going to get any kind of rainfall. So that's something important to know. They also spin clockwise. So whereas a depression will spin anticlockwise, um, an anticyclone will spin clockwise. And this is like uh, the screw thread analogy again. Except this time, again you might have heard this if you've ever done any woodwork, Righty tighty. You turn your screwdriver, you screw clockwise, like so, and the screw will go into whatever it is you're screwing it into. And it's exactly the same for atmospheric conditions. So it's spinning clockwise and pressure increasing. Now these things are big. They are much bigger than depressions. They're up to a thousand kilometres in size. So if you think about the UK, you have an area of high pressure and it will all be absorbed within the depression. Now, they are large, slow moving. They don't have um, any rain attached to them. They just sort of sit and gently spin. And we get really good weather. We get bright weather conditions most of the time. They are not complicated. In fact, they're very, very simple. Uh, it's important to know that they last for up to 5 to 12 days. Um, and in terms of their structure, they are very simple. However, there is a bit of a catch to the conditions. Normally, they're dry and they're clear, and in summer that's great because lots of warm weather. No clouds to block the sun, everything warms up very quickly. In winter, it's very cold. No clouds, because there's no water vapour there. Uh, so no um, water vapour forming clouds, it's all um, held within the air. So we get cold conditions in winter, but we can also get fog conditions forming uh, because the ground gets so cold and the air uh, which is warming up as it's approaching uh, the ground because it's compressing. If the ground's really cold suddenly that temperature drops and you get low level clouds or as we call them fog. You don't have to know too much about how that forms but the key point is that you do get some fog in winter. And it doesn't blow away because there's no wind. Because it's very dry, it's very clear, it's very still. There's no conditions to blow it away. So those are the general conditions. The caveat though, the slight complexity here, is that if you've got summer conditions where it's really warm and it's uh, heating up and heating up, lots of um, water vapour can be drawn out of the ground and that heats up and uh, it rises up through the atmosphere and it can create thunderstorms thunderstorms and hail so anticyclones can lead to thunderstorms and hail but that's like a secondary impact 
the, the anticyclone doesn't do that itself, it's what comes from the ground heating up because of the anticyclone. So anticyclone in general, very, very simple, um, but it can lead to, because it's dry and clear, we can get um, in summer, uh, droughts, forest fires, things like that. In the winter, we can get very, very cold snaps and freezing conditions. So, any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.